Project Power is a new film coming to Netflix this weekend starring Jamie Foxx, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, and Dominique Fishback. So when a pill that gives its users unpredictable superpowers for five minutes hits the streets of New Orleans, a teenage dealer and a local cop must team with an ex-soldier to take down the group responsible for its creation. The spec script for this movie, originally just called Power, went through a bidding war and you can understand why. A pill that gives you superpowers for five minutes when you swallow it, you, you don't really know what your superpower is going to be. You could could burst into flames, you could blow up, you have no idea, you could become impervious to bullets. It could be anything, which seems like it could be unlimited potential for a really exciting action film set in a world with unlimited possibilities. Unfortunately, despite that great idea, this film takes that idea and, and puts it in the most generic plot ever. Jamie Foxx is searching for the corporation that stole his daughter. And he believes that this corporation that stole his daughter is behind the creation of this pill that's causing chaos on the streets of New Orleans. It feels like a disappointingly bland way to introduce us to this world. Joseph Gordon-Levitt plays Frank, who's friends with this young girl, Robin, because she's a dealer and she's able to give him pills and he understands what his superpower is and he uses them on the job, which is a fun storyline. Unfortunately, this movie has a lot of storylines that don't really coalesce until its final minutes. And, and once it finally does, it kind of leaves you hanging and wondering why so many different storylines had to be in this movie. Because the inclusion of Dominique Fishback's character, Robin, at the end of the film feels kind of unnecessary. That's not to say that she's bad in the movie. I think she's great in this movie. She has a couple of my favorite scenes. This is purely a discussion about this character in the script, in this story, what the character really does for the story. And unfortunately, it feels very strange to me because you have Jamie Foxx's character who's, who's desperately searching for his real daughter. And he teams up with sort of a substitute daughter who doesn't have a father in her life. And for a while, he's kind of a father figure. While you're watching the film, not entirely sure how it's going to end, that dynamic feels kind of interesting, but I can't spoil the movie for you, but once you do see its ending, it feels like it led to nothing. The directors of this film previously made Paranormal Activity 3, 4, and the film Nerve. And if you saw Nerve, this film has a similar style. It's very heightened, it's very fast. Things happen very quickly, and there's a lot of energy to the way the film moves. It's made very competently. The shots look really great. All the cinematography is very strong. The real problem with this movie is its script. The story feels like third or fourth draft, and it's baffling to me that it went through su such a bidding war, and it's probably just because the concept is cool. The tone is all over the place too. There's scenes that feel extremely exciting, that feel very sad and depressing about what it's like to, to live in a world that just doesn't care about you when your mother's really sick and you're trying to pay for her bills and the only way you can do that is become a drug dealer, that's very sad. And Dominique Fishback's character, Robin, adds a lot of emotion to the movie. But the film also has a lot of comedy that just fell flat for me. And awkward CGI, like this one guy who kind of takes the pill and just turns into a giant, I don't know, the cave troll from Fellowship of the Ring is the best way I can describe him. <laughs> and it, it was kind of funny, unfortunately. I was also surprised by how the film treats its rating, which is R. Sometimes it's very safe. There are two occurrences in this movie where someone's about to say the F word and they cut away mid F word, like it's a PG-13 movie or something. There's also a lot of violence in the movie that is filmed in a way that is, is very unclear. Some guy gets his head shoved through an ice sculpture, but the shot jerks to the left so quickly that you can't really tell what happened until later they show him bleeding out, and you're like, oh, so that's what happened. There's a lot of moments like that throughout this movie where it feels like the film is censoring itself, almost. Like aiming for a PG-13, even though it's definitely not going to get it. But at the same time, the movie is also strangely mean-spirited. There's a scene where an innocent woman swallows one of these pills and just starts freezing to death. And in the background, Jamie Foxx is fighting a bunch of dudes, but we don't focus on him. We just focus on the woman freezing to death, screaming, very slowly dying. It was very gross, actually. I I'm usually not bothered by that kind of thing. It was really nice to see Joseph Gordon-Levitt in a movie again. I haven't seen him in a film since Snowden. I haven't seen the 7500 movie that's on Amazon Prime. Jamie Foxx is always good. I like him in everything. He's one of the most likable, charismatic actors around. Dominique Fishback, like I said, is really good. The talent on the screen is phenomenal. The directors do a, a really good job of helming a fun, exciting-looking movie. 
this is all script problems. This all feels like something that should have taken more time. I, I just feel like they really should have looked at that draft and, and tried to figure out what really needs to be there and, and what doesn't need to be there. Because it's so strange to have a movie where the entire goal is to find this daughter. She's barely in the film, but we have sort of like this replacement daughter for the majority of the movie. It's just a strange narrative choice that didn't really pay off for me. I'm gonna give Project Power a C. Like I said, it's on Netflix this weekend, so if you guys wanna check it out, do so. It should be pretty easy to see. But uh, I don't know. I feel like I could have used a lot more drafts. Guys, thank you so much as always for watching. Look forward to more reviews very soon, including my Die Hard 4 review this Sunday. Also, my buddy Scott Mance, film critic for Access Hollywood, has decided to start a YouTube channel. He's a really great guy, and I've always loved his enthusiasm for movies. He's, he's easily one of the most excited movie fans out there. So I've left a link for his channel in the description. If you want to go over and support him, please do. Guys, thank you so much as always for watching. You're the best. And if you like this, you can click right here and get stuckmanized.